I would just like to kind of start off um, by throwing it over to Rob. Talk about your guys' relationship. Well, I, I think I'm very fortunate uh, in as strength and conditioning coach. My situation is pretty unique, uh, having been with uh, Mike for a long time. Uh, actually, uh, when Mike came in as a player, I was on staff at that time. So our relationship uh, is, is really good, and I think that's important. Uh, and I hope that other people would see that and understand how that can be successful for you because I believe there's a lot of trust. And so you went through his system. Yes, he, he, uh, he was there when I was a player. And um, then, of course, he left. And then when I got the job, he was actually the first guy, really, that I tried to get back um, to come. You know, Rob had, had been an Oklahoma State grad, and, and his wife was an Oklahoma State grad. And, and, you know, he was at a very good school, had a great job. But um, I thought that we had a chance to get him back. Um, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I've been in college football long enough at that time to know that the strength and conditioning is the most important aspect of developing college football players. And why do you say that? Well, coach gets them really 11 months out of the year. So the, the uh, discipline, the structure, the toughness, uh, the environment that he creates and develops sets them up for us. Um, the players now come in in June and July. So in, in years ago, we showed up in August. But these guys now have been with him for eight weeks, even the new players. And so when we get them, they're conditioned for our system. And he provides that. But he, he has a very difficult job. We all know that no matter what your age, nobody's fired up about running and lifting weights and working out where it's hard and you sweat. You know, people, I still run into people that say that was an exhilarating run. I've never had one of those. <laughs> I mean, I've been miserable from the start, you know, and, it, and if, if the door was anywhere else clo uh, further from our locker room, I'd go to lunch instead of running at lunch. But, but Coach has a difficult job because he makes guys improve and there's pain involved in what he does. And so, um, and I've often said this, not obviously just because we're here, but you know, if he decides to get out of it, I'll have to do, find something else to do um, because uh, he, he makes our job so much easier. And, and your job is essentially to maximize genetic potential, right? Yes. And so talk about the mental makeup of a, a football player. Well, uh, we're, we're trying to essentially develop uh, a swagger, a physical presence uh, with our guys uh, because that's essentially what it takes to be successful. So we're training that dominant alpha male type mentality is what we're trying to create. And that's great for the football field. Yes. Where does that become an issue? Well, uh, we're, we're trying to, to create that within that athlete, but at the same time, when you get out in the social world or in just your normal everyday life, uh, we want a guy on the football field who is ready to go at any time and is ready to step up, but because somebody maybe cuts in front of you at the checkout line, we don't want that same type of behavior. So <laughs> that's where it becomes uh, a little bit of a, a balancing act. Which, Coach, that's why it's so important to give these guys education around it. No question, we spend uh, an enormous amount of time uh, and really way more than we did even four to five years ago in, in trying to... Why did that evolve? Well, we figured this out. Uh, the reason we're here today is, is our staff, we've been there long enough, Coach has been with us forever and I've done it long enough now that realize the importance of the developing the student athlete and educating them on what we expect and we talked about this, you know, the millennials, that's who we're coaching now. They have information at their hand. They have a cell phone, which is essentially a computer. They don't need coaches and parents to tell them and give them information. We relied on our information from our teachers, our coaches, and our parents. They get information from phones. And so there's a different approach. They want to know why. Why do I need to lift? Why, do you, why am I running stadiums on Fridays? Why am I on the squat rack? Why do we run these sprints? Well, you give him that information, and what Coach is able to do for us is he's steady across the board, very disciplined, very structured, but the players appreciate him and respect him. And the term they use is um, it's body by glass. 
You know, yeah, I'm well aware, man. He's designed my workout plan. Right, and so, um, and the ones that leave, like um, Emmanuel Ogba, who was a, uh, really, I, I say he's a first round pick because he was a 32nd player pick and the Patriots didn't get the 32nd pick for whatever reason. And, uh, and he talked about the body by glass got him from where he came into our program to being basically a first round pick. And that's the way our players see the development of their, of their um, career. But it's not only the physical part, because Rob and those guys study, they're on the cutting edge and the latest science and, and how to develop their bodies and take care of them. But it's the mental, what he talked about. And, and he's gone and studied with the Navy SEALs and things like that. And, and uh, he uses the term that, you know, we're gonna put them through a, a very difficult time, but the ones that make it out the end of that tunnel are the ones that we want fighting for us on game day because it won't be easy. And, and that's why he's so valuable to Oklahoma State football. Well, and, and talk about that because um, I think through our conversations, I've come to find that you have understood how important character development is because you can design the best plan there is in terms of strength and conditioning and taking a body to another level. But if that person doesn't have discipline, it becomes a piece of paper. True, true. And I think the big revelation for me was uh, I didn't understand why everybody, all 130 athletes, didn't want to be at a fever pitch every day. I mean, and so as we started to study the different athletes and what, what was causing the pullback, um, and so we started to find that there were a lot of things established in maybe the first 18 years of their life that we were trying to correct in four. Very difficult challenge, but ultimately, it went back to their character, and so that's when we started to formulate a plan to address character development because we felt like that was probably a missing piece that we could pull some people up, maybe, and get them back up to where we would like them. And usually they're just small tweaks, but uh, creating the awareness and, and just getting them to think about that it was, was huge for us. Well, and I think one of the things that makes Rob unique is he had the foresight to understand how important a third party can be and, and truly understanding the athlete because that third party can help you, they can raise awareness of what that kid's going through and then allows you to connect better. Can you talk about that? Yes, um, I was able to hire a, a young man who um, culturally connected with the guys that I'm working with primarily, number one, because there was seemed to be sometimes a disconnect. And, and I was able to uh, bring a young man in and to our program, and he necessarily, I could have probably hired better strength and conditioning coaches. Oh, yeah, can coaches. I actually say that? Because I was talking with him, and he said, uh, Rob said, this is great. I, I forgot about this stuff. He said uh, the best advice Rob gave him was, look, Keep your mouth shut. They don't know what you don't know. Your job is to connect with them. I'll give you the technical knowledge. Correct, correct. It, because it was relatively new for him. But he was a great counselor. Uh, he had great rapport with the men. Uh, and so sometimes when I would bring a young man in and say, I don't understand, I, I, don't, I don't feel you training at the level maybe that you were a year ago, or maybe it's just there, there's, there's a lag there. And they wouldn't really connect with me, and, and whether it was culturally or you know, just what, for whatever reason. So really that's where that third party came in because he really doesn't have a dog in the fight and he could connect with those guys. And then it was a great source of information for me. And I realized a lot of times I was probably the one at fault because I was maybe too demanding and I didn't understand why they weren't doing what I thought they should be doing, but yet there were outlying factors that were causing that. And he was able to bring that to my attention and, I really think that helped us, or helped me, uh, and that's that third-party awareness. Hey, talk about the third-party awareness, the value. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we visited a second ago about the, the incoming class that's been with us now since June, and at the end of July, Coach will send him home for three or four days before we get started. And in the staff room, we'll ask him about the, the character, the attitude, the temperament, what we're dealing with with each one of those, and they, they will know. He'll be able to give us a 30-second rundown on each player, and here's what you've got. Hey, he's guy's eager, he's hungry, he doesn't lack in self-confidence. You know, he may, he may roll pretty fast, and then he'll say, you know, uh, this guy, is, he's strong, but, you know, he's, he's kind of to himself and he's quiet, um, not sure about his toughness right now. You know, we've got some work ahead of us in these areas. Well, for us as coaches, um, 
that information is valuable. It's, it's no different than um, the information that a teacher can get on a student in areas he's not a great uh, learner unless he sees visuals. He's a really good visual learner and doesn't listen very well. Well, that's important information. And that's what we get from them, you know, with, with him bringing in uh, the third party and in the uh, process we've gone through over the last two or three years to really develop, you know, what's driving winning, the character side of it, is, uh, is his ability to get the young people to communicate with us. And when Coach said I was probably a little too hard on him, see, that's our generation is grinded out of them. The millennials that we're coaching now, they're not all buying into that, okay? And so we have to be better listeners and communicators. And um, that third-party communication has really helped our football team over the last couple of years. And, and they can find things out in the personal life, like if their, their best friend gets shot or a parent gets evicted, things that would never be on your radar. And they'll come and tell me. And sometimes we don't know that. These, these young people will keep it to themselves. And coach will come up or he'll say, hey, you know, so-and-so, he's, I know he had, he's had a bad couple of days. You know, his buddy back home got shot and, and he's not gonna make it. I would, probably wouldn't have known that. And that communication and the information that we can get from them helps us in a big way.